if I could do it, it's not cool to me. Yeah, the Mona Lisa is in blue. Huh. The Venus de Milo is also in the blue. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. That's that no armed. Yeah, I know. I know what it, yeah. what it is. Um, don't care. <laughs> Most famous art, I don't give a crap. No. I know, it's, just it's cool. I'm, like, I'm no, looking. your facts are cool, and I, I'm not shooting down your fact. I'm just saying, like, the, I don't care about the Mona Lisa. I think it's stupid. And just for those that don't know, when you do see the Mona Lisa, you will be disappointed. It's very small. It is very tiny. <laughs> That's why it's my nickname for Gord's penis. <laughs> oh, you yeah. want to see the Mona Lisa, do you? <laughs> very That's small sad. and disappointing. It's true. <laughs> Um, in the 18th century, if you had, if you had smallpox and survived and you had the scars, you were pretty much guaranteed employment. That's weird. Why would they want that? Because you didn't have to, because you weren't going to be getting it again and you wouldn't be taking off time off work. Oh yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) I get your job. Nope. But I got the scars. Perfect. (laughs) Get in there and work. So, here's a new one that just crossed my mind. Well, it didn't cross my mind. It crossed my screen. So, (laughs) (laughs) Joe Biden claimed that uh, 6,114 military service people have died from COVID. The actual number is seven. (laughs) So, he is a little off there. In all fairness, he used to work for NASA. No, he didn't. (laughs) Math and numbers. There you go. <laughs> 6,000 people. No, actually seven. That's a bit of a difference there. Wow. Somebody literally said six or seven. He goes, 6,700? Holy shit. Yeah, pretty much. I'll add a few more to the end of that one. I'm going to release that to the public. Because <laughs> I'm crazy Joe Biden. Hey, everybody. COVID's fake and stupid. Can we get over it? Thanks. That'd be good. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, do you want to know something in America? A law was changed in 1913. So from 1912 and back, you could legally mail a baby. I guess. (laughs) They just never thought to not make that illegal? No. uh, Mailing children became a common practice in rural America as the price of postage for a child was cheaper than the price of a child's train or bus ticket. Well, I guess that makes sense. Um, I'd love to know how many actually survived. Like, I mean, you must be getting a ton of stiffy showing How did you even get them in the mailbox? That's a great... Well, they didn't... Have, I mean, did they have mailbox back then? I don't, no, I don't know. <laughs> That's when you did, you could tell the good parents from the bad ones, the ones that use boxes and the ones that just use those padded envelopes. <laughs> yeah. You're bad parents. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Can't even buy a box for your kids like good parents. <laughs> but everybody, uh, that's a, a, I'm so glad I was born in the 20th century, like, and and not the 21st because those guys are all fucked. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> like I was born in the perfect time in history where there was really not too much fucked up shit like that. Yeah. Um, there was still like parents did some fucked up shit when we were young and. Then, like nowadays, all our parents would go to jail for half, just for like a family outing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, and I'm not complaining. I, I think it was better. But I, I've just, I think we were born in the perfect time. We didn't like we we didn't have a real like a epidemic that was super like like we we didn't. There was no 80s, 90s, um, uh, like uh, what when I polio or anything like that. No, we'd, we'd already beat all that stuff. And there was no weird, like, mailing your kids and shit is legal. <laughs> that just didn't happen. Like, we're just in the perfect time. But we were, we're not all YouTube retards. Um, yeah. So we, I think we just nailed it. We we nailed the perfect time in history to be born. We get to see all this innovation, but we don't get to mail our kids to people. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think we're lucky. That's all I'm saying. I can never have you ever heard. Go ahead. No, you know, you, never... you keep going. <laughs> um, have you ever heard of the gentleman by the name of Walter Frederick Morrison? 
Walter Frederick Morrison. Walter Morrison. No, don't think I have. Well, in 1948, he invented the Frisbee. Oh, look at that. And it was originally called the Pluto Platter. That, absolutely, I still, it should be. I agree. No, yeah, interesting the Pluto Platter. Uh, that's all, that's <laughs> what I'm calling it from now on, by the way. From now on. Pluto you guys want to go play extreme Pluto Platters? <laughs> Um, just in 2010, to, just be that guy on the beach. Hey, can I play with your frisbee? It's not a frisbee, sir. It's a Pluto platter. <laughs> it's a Pluto platter. <laughs> Learn your history, you little shit. And get out of here. <laughs> uh, well, in 2010, at the age of 90, he died, and his family cremated him and then turned his ashes into a frisbee. Don't do that to people. Well, I guess <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do with their ashes, but that's weird. So somewhere uh-huh. there's a dog chewing on this guy's ashes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. His ashes are on someone's roof. <laughs> Every Frisbee I ever owned is on someone's roof. Yeah. I, get, I get aggressive with them. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a good guy to play Frisbee with. It's always competitive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always aiming for the nuts. <laughs> always competitive Frisbee. That's right. It's going straight into your junk or on someone's roof. Either way, this is going to be a short game. (laughs) Um, Um, That's funny. We are rounding the corner to an hour and a half here. I think we've pretty much gone through all the facts we need to go through. uh, I know Gord's eager to keep going because he hasn't done a show in a while. um, Yeah, whatever. Uh, I could, yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. Apparently this is a good idea because I'm certain I just mentally shut off, shut off there. So. <laughs> <laughs> My brain just went completely fucking blank from all there. I'm like, I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm good. Yeah, that's it. He's good. That's all. <laughs> <I'm> good. <laughs> um, I I have I have uh, two that I thought you would find absolutely fascinating before we wrap it up. Number one, our lovely land of Canada that we adore was the first country in the world to build a landing pad exclusively for UFOs. Oh, fuck. In 1967, in St. Paul's, Alberta, (laughs) they constructed a landing pad that was just in case UFOs wanted to come there and they could land there. I thought Hmm. that was interesting. It's still there, apparently. There was another stupid that? Alberta one that I don't know. But that one was stupid, and I thought you'd get a kick out of that one. I, I kind of did. Uh, I'm going to laugh if, if a UFO were ever did land there, and it landed like 10 feet away from it. 10 feet away from it. Like, Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> you have the landing, they're like, is that a fucking, is that a, is that a, is that a landing for a spaceship? Yep. Park beside it. <laughs> Go back and do it again. You bastards. You should have put it here. That's when we killed them. That's like the Mars yeah. attacks. <laughs> um, you and we are your friends. <laughs> the other thing I thought was really neat, and it's also Alberta, believe it or not, is Wood Buffalo National Park in Alberta. Mm-hmm. It's a national park called Wood Buffalo National Park. Oh. It's in Alberta. It's bigger than Denmark and Sweden. Our parks are bigger than your countries. That's how awesome we are. <laughs> we got a park in Alberta that's bigger than Denmark and a mall that beats all your malls to shit. Huh. That West Edmonton Mall. That's just interesting. I thought that was neat. We got, that is very interesting. Canada's big. We have big things here. It's true. That's very big interesting. laughs. Big bellies. Big everything. I just got a small deck. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I have no food here. I can't afford to order food. I don't have any money. Fuck. Um. Oh, okay, kids. We're going to wrap it up. This is a weird podcast. Like, it was very not podcasty. <laughs> I very much apologize. Um, we're always I just little, love our facts. I love it. We're a little, love our facts. little off our game always when we take a couple days off, but we'll bounce right back tomorrow. Uh, here's a fun fact. Whichever one of you motherfuckers hacked my bank account, I'm going to find you and kill you. There's a fact. Oh, uh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. There was no money in it. Um, but <laughs> anyway, there was a bunch of fraudulent 
attempts to do transactions in my one account that wasn't overdrawn, so now it's shut down. You bastards. Like, couldn't you pick the one that sucks? That would have been better. Anyway, I just wanted to bitch about that on the air. Uh, don't hack people's bank accounts. It's mean. Yeah, completely agree. And if anybody were to hack mine, can you leave me some money? That'd be great. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? <laughs> I've always dreamed of that, of somebody fucking, like, stealing my wallet, and then they go to the bank machine, they go to pull money, and they're like, oh, shit. Poor I've always bastard. said. And the next thing you know, I got, like, an extra 400 bucks in there. <laughs> That's what I've always said. If anyone ever stole my identity, they'd uh, give it back and lend me money. But, no, apparently not. Because my account's been hacked twice. Because I don't pay any attention to what I'm doing online. I'm just like, That's a good idea. I should do that and give out all my information all the time. <laughs> should always do that. That's what I should always do. I've been hacked twice. I've had a, I just got my bank account in March. <laughs> <laughs> hacked twice since then. Um, you know, I actually came across something, Eric. Uh, I, I want to. I just wanted to mention this on the show, just because I just thought this was fascinating. Um, just because it just goes to show that they'll literally they'll make anything. Um, you can actually get a ring. It's a sterling silver ring. And on the top of the ring is an actual functioning butterfly knife. That's dumb. It's the it's <laughs> so think about how tiny that butterfly knife is because it's on a ring. It's not a huge fat fucking ring. It's not a massive ring by any stretch. It's just a regular size band. And it's got this tiny ass little thing that actually will flip and open up. <laughs> it's like, and it's a hundred bucks. What would be the point? You could pick your nose with it. That's about it. Uh, I would butterfly not knife, pick I my nose, pick with, my nose because with because I would probably sharpen that edge out of that thing pretty hardcore. <laughs> Just because. It's pretty dumb. Oh, there was a name. Yeah. I don't remember the name now. I wanted to ask you about a name. Anyway, kids, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We will talk to you again tomorrow night with fun facts and maybe even some news if I feel energetic. Um, until then, take care of each other. See ya, fuck nuts. Um... <laughs> This oh, is late. Right? Eric and Gord. What if we're right? Live right now. I work till seven thirty. Oh, okay, we'll probably start the phone at the same time as today. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to be on the phone though.